would like to start my presentation from cordial thanks. Firstly, to all of you, audience, who came to this lecture, and secondly, to organizers for suggesting such a stimulating theme. For me, this topic became important opening for further analysis of my research results accumulated uh, during 25 years on the fieldwork among and for refugees. Speaking of my background, um, I would like to stress the fact that all my academic career uh, has been connected and still is with psychology of religion, which is the borderline discipline which belongs both to psychology and to migration studies. And this border is not that easily to be crossed. Um, speaking of a uh, trajectory of my fieldwork, uh, I will be referring uh, on, during the lecture to my different subgroups. Uh, let me start by telling you uh, about two real stories. The first, I call it knife. I was about to, it was late 90s, I was about to leave for my uh, research trip among refugees from Kosovo. And a colleague of mine, almost on the threshold of the institute building, stopped me and asked the question, by the way, Halina, do you have a knife? I was kind of shocked. Knife? For what? You know, you are going to uh, do research, you are going to meet refugees, Kosovo refugees, they are Muslims, they might be danger, uh, they might rape you. The other story belongs to uh, events uh, some years later and my research among Upper Karabakh people. People who came as uh, because of the war in Upper Karabakh, they were uh, Armenian Christians, and they wanted to uh, they wanted to uh, order a mass memorial mass for people who perish in the war in Upper Karabakh. They wanted uh, to see local priest and to just pay and order the mass. However, they were met by priests with the simple statement, go to your sheikh, because he couldn't believe that people coming from Armenia could be uh, any, uh, anyhow different than being a Muslim. So the sheikh was the best option. And speaking more detail about my research subgroups, they consisted uh, from uh, subgroups which I have researched in Poland, but also abroad, uh, in Turkey and in Jordan. A plus, uh, which is marked in uh, green, uh, they were a group of scholars at risk, people who came as the refugees to the Western countries, because of persecution at the home university, and also artists who were hosted by, uh, as the refugees by the ICORN network, which is a network protection net network aiming in supporting artists getting persecuted in their home countries. Um, let give you an outline of the presentation and this outline um, this outline uh, goes to um, uh, to three sets of topics the first of all analytical framework 
then category of refugees whom I want to use as the example for um, the strategy of diversity, as the um, category of diversity, and finally, key takeaways which I would like you to take home after this lecture. Mm. Why uh, do we need deconstruction while uh, analyzing the role of religion in coping with refugee trauma? Brief answer is because of the mutually excluding results of various analyses and those competing perspectives in order to enhance further understanding of the problem need deconstruction of the concepts. Mm, I would say the deconstruction of the concepts is uh, in the service of diversity because we need to specify subcategories of refugees, we need to specify different periods um, in which we are encountering refugees. And finally, we also have to be careful what methodological paradigms and research methods employed by researchers are present while approaching refugees. And conducting such deconstruction will give a justice to diversity and contribute to analytical framework. Speaking of, um, speaking of uh, theoretical concepts, the first is the concept of resilience, to which I'm referring in the, um, in the title of my presentation. And the resilience is both the process, which starts because some life experiences are particularly challenging, and if they are met with flexibility, rooted in right coping strategy, right mindset, and availability of social resources, then the process results in adaptation. Just to, to name resilience, I'm referring to Dictionary of American Psychological Association. And the second concept, is agency. Um, in, uh, let me uh, let me uh, show you um, let me show you a diagram which I believe uh, gives uh, which I believe gives clarity for the concept. So uh, um, agency is the ability to influence one's action, one's functioning, uh, and course of events. So the individual intends to influence a situation in certain way because of the specific output, intention, reflection, expectation of results of the one action, and also reflection of what might happen as the result of undertaken action. And then uh, this concept um, of agency and resilience, they are intertwined. Um, resilience after refugee trauma is a precondition for restoring agency. If people don't end the process with adaptation, uh, agency will not be present. But also agency is the demonstration of restored resilience, which, uh, which is the aim of getting uh, control and activity in, in the situation.
And now let us have a look who are refugees. Um, obviously, we can uh, obviously we can look uh, on many definitions. Uh, which will provide uh, information uh, according to uh, UNCHR uh, protocol, ac according New York Convention, according uh, various documents. However, uh, all these uh, all these um, definitions are not so good for. Mm, are not so good for uh, getting more information and to understand who are refugees better. Therefore, I've decided the airport, which are about to leave in so different uh, directions. And this picture, what is the main characteristic, is a no entry sign, because I believe this is probably the major difference between uh, between who refugees are. They are people with whom mm, the way forward is blocked by no entry sign. They are not wanted, they are not expected, they are not looked forward in any place uh, in, the, in the world. And uh, in case you are somewhat interested, about this uh, cartoonist, I would refer you uh, to the paper in Guardian from 2017, in which you can find more information about the artist, but also more illustration of his cartoons, which are kind of the first hand account from Manus Island, from detention center for people waiting for people waiting for getting um, for getting um, asylum in Australia. And um, right uh, now uh, let uh, let us look um, on the uh, let us look on the next slide, which uh, we will be moving uh, closely to the diversity in the category of refugees. In order to analyze properly um, the issue of diversity in this category, why this category is particularly useful, let us move to uh, specific subcategories of refugees, their location, uh, their uh, age, background, gender and family situation. Well, the first of all, uh, I would uh, I would like uh, uh, refer to the fact that uh, speaking of refugees, especially in the media, we often talk about the faceless crowd, crowd in which an individual is really hardly uh, seen. Uh, faceless crowd is very often connected to specific perspective on refugees. There is a victim perspective, perspective of someone who is passive, who is just a real victim. And that's very opposite towards the active, resilient and agentic perspective. And that's the first differentiation which is worthwhile to be recognized. The second uh, differentiation is a, a specific location of refugees as well 
as their background. Um, the common statement Syrian refugees could cover easily, and in fact it does cover rural Syrian families on Syrian-Turkish border, and in the same time, urban, single, educated male in, in Berlin or in Istanbul. Again, refugees in Turkey could pertain to those professors who were expelled from universities, and in fact, they become internal refugees, couldn't find any employment uh, uh, in Turkey and seeking uh, some ways to earn money doing some menial jobs. But also um, artists, highly skilled, highly successful, talented people who are in the same category. So speaking of refugees as the crowd, as the faceless, no individual specific group is problematic. The second um, need to uh, specify refugees pertains to the uh, situation of women, which is distinctly different, speaking of wives and mothers from caring complete families or widows or divorced or separated females running to safety from abusive husbands Backed, backed by religious and customary laws. And finally, when we are talking about adults and children, position of children could be really different depending upon the structure of the family. For example, in the research with Chechen children, I have found their way of attempt to regain resilience via prayer. They were praying to Allah to avoid a danger that the father, father will kidnap them and bring forcefully back to Chechnya, depriving their mother and right. And uh, here, uh, here is again the picture which uh, explains a lot about the category of refugees and the role of religion for them. This is a picture of 25 years old Iman. That's, by the way, not the, my picture. It comes from UNCHR leaflet. She came uh, from Aleppo in Turkey. Uh, and uh, at the moment of the photograph, she is in the refugee camp in Turkey with her children. What is her most precious possession is her uh, copy of Koran, because uh, as she certifies, Koran is her connection to God, and that's why she values Koran so much. And uh, this is not only connection to uh, God, Also, uh, religion could be also a connection to new locality. Yet another group of uh, Syrian women who are urban refugees told me that religion and exactly teaching their neighbors, Syrian neighbors, uh, Turkish uh, neighbors, sorry, to read Quran uh, is the way of getting connection in the new locality. So religion could be connection uh, to the God, but also religion helps people to get connected to the new place. And uh, it really supports uh, resiliency as the adaptation to new situation and helps to regain agency in building bridges to new neighbors through religion. However, a word of uh, caution. We have to be uh, careful and remember that sometimes a local situation might contribute to lack of support of refugees in spite of shared religion between refugees in locals. I'm referring to my research in Aqaba in Jordan, 
when people from Syria living outside the camp were not supported even in the way of offering some jobs to the boys or men by local population. And my question why this is the case has been met with sort of, well, you know, we have such a hardships with finding jobs because of economic situation in Jordan. We cannot afford, in fact, to support refugees uh, as well. And uh, then uh, the next aspect of the refugee uh, of the diversity among refugees. This is a diversity uh, connected with the timing uh, when the refugees are researched. Mm, generally speaking, uh, we can divide periods of uh, refugehood and uh, religion into three and the role of religion into three um, different uh, time intervals. The first one is the location when people are still in the place from which they are coming. The second one at this location when people are running to safety. And the third one is a relocation, um, which uh, means people try to get new placement and get rooted in the new placement again. Each of these contexts either requires, supports or also constricts resilience and agency of refugees and employs religion in different capacity. As you can easily notice, these uh, three periods are uh, described from the perspective of psychology of place, because I think we very often notice the refugees just in one moment, in one period of their life, and we keep forgetting that they are connected to the much longer periods, much uh, more differentiated location, and we have just a glimpse we have a snapshot of their situation. We hardly ever follow the process. Speaking of location, role of religion in the location, it's very often uh, boundary making and stigmatizing. Uh, among uh, people uh, in, uh, involved in ethnic cleansing, religion is the factor um, they are labeled, uh, which helps them to get labeled as enemies. But in the same time, uh, it's persecution, uh, it's uh, sometimes a retaliation, which makes people uh, to fly from the local place. Uh, also, in the location, religion can be used as the oppression tool by restoring proper moral, moral norms. I'm referring to situation in Chechnya, in which occupying military forces kidnap women uh, and torture men because they call them infidels and in order to restore proper moral norms, they justify their deeds. But also in the location, religion could be tool of persecution towards religious dissenters and atheists. And the groups on which I've mentioned before, a refugee artist and scholar at risk, at risk are connected to this role of religion. Um, and uh, then 
um, after people decide to flee the country, we are entering a second uh, period, which is a dislocation. The first was location and second dislocation. They are different models which display uh, and uh, help to understand the situation. The first one, war displacement model. In this model, uh, which is uh, chiefly connected to uh, disorders in migrants' functioning because of the war tra uh, wartime trauma and violence at loss, there is no referral to religion. Religion is not the factor which is taken into consideration. Uh, in the second model, ecological displacement related model, religion appears uh, as, uh, in two roles, as the cage and as the uh, bridge. Either it could help people to come to, the, uh, to join the uh, community, or it can be uh, also uh, kind of the restrictive tool which keeps them on the side of enemies. Uh, also during the escape route, um, religion is sometimes a vital, vital and uh, the, sometimes the only, uh, only way to help people to retain hope in the hopeless situation. Just a little statistic, they are taken from Lampedusa from 2015 and 2016. In 2015, um, it has been a one death. Uh, people were perishing on sea for uh, more than 1,000 arrivals. In 2016, one death in every 400 arrivals. And uh, here is the little excerpts from the interview with the locals. They told me, well, uh, the fact that people are dying on sea doesn't make headlines anymore. Nobody is interested. Only if there is more than 100 bodies discovered in the one day, then the media are getting interest. And uh, in the ecological displacement model, not only uh, dangerous flight, but also dangerous refugee camps are taken into consideration. And again, uh, religion plays a double role as the bridge and as the cage. Um, and the third, uh, the third situation, relocation. Relocation, uh, which is described by adaptation and development after trauma and persecution model. This is a model which has been created by Australian psychiatrist Derek Silove, uh, who is uh, the only scholar paying explicitly attention to the role of religion. Religion as a possible tool helping in reconstruction of meaning of life through bridging past and present, old and new life. And I think uh, that's a very important because uh, religion gets its, its placement placement which helps to understand why people need religion, why uh, even not explicitly, then as the tool for getting meaning of life after all traumas they experience. And uh, again, the picture which illustrates the value of adapt, uh, of the adapt model. This is a picture of war refugee from Angola 
living in the Democratic Republic of Congo. She's holding a Bible. She's been a refugee for 50 years, and the Bible still was with her through all this time. She explained that Bible is a connection to her previous life, uh, because she ran to safety when she was only 20 uh, from her home uh, town. And also, it gives the explanation of all atrocities she experienced in life. This is uh, what she says. In this world, bad things happen. But in the Bible, you can find words which will help you. So in that uh, situation, in the situation of massive uh, dis dislocation and relocation again, uh, religion plays a role of the helpful tool in getting people back uh, on the, um, in the new life, back to the new situation. And uh, then we are getting these concepts, which are which are resilience, agency, and timing, uh, and how they are interconnected. Resilience is a precondition for restoring agency of refugees. Agency is a demonstration of resilience. And agency, and that's interesting, is either wanted or refused at the different stages of refugehood. Um, I would say the uh, agency is met in with the very inconsistent expectation to, towards refugees in, during the time. An agency is perceived as the leave-taking during the flight, um, as the necessary, uh, and desired when people arrive to the host country. They have to be agentic to find location, new location, they have to be, ag be agentic to get the first uh, measures of safety. In the same time, when refugees are um, located in the reception centers or refugee camps, then agency is uh, um, uprooted as much as possible. To the contrary, they are getting learned helplessness attitude because a genetic refugee is the refugee who might be difficult to manage and uh, even uh, expect some persecution from the camp personnel. And agency is explicitly refused during application procedure because of the management of refugees, because of international law. Uh, but in the miraculous way, agency needs to be restored and even become wanted after receiving humanitarian protection. And uh, one of the diverse images of refugees, which I encounter across the time, is just the statement that the, they are so passive. Mm. Many social workers who are employees of the refugee centers, refugee camps, told me, these people don't want anything. They don't care for themselves. And then when met with the question, how many years they are awaiting for resolving their application for humanitarian status, then very often you can hear the answer, which says about many months and in some cases even many, many years. And if we look from the perspective of refugees on the agency, then uh, it's uh, 
in uh, intentionality, anticipation, self-reactivity, and their self-reflection, which needs to be recognized. In the, um, in the interviews, there are ongoing questions. Who am I? Why I am here? What is my history, culture, and religion? And how I could, in which way I could contribute to the community, to other refugees, how I can remain myself, how can, can I oppose to dissolving, which is erosion of agency due to external situation, and how I can oppose to negative stereotypes because of religion. And again, let me give you some illustration. Um, this is a this is a workshop. They are the pictures from the workshop which are conducted by Chechen refugee women in the refugee centers. Uh, they like to teach other refugees how to retain some measure of the agency. In Chechen culture, the way women dress is extremely important. Therefore, uh, it is so important to help them to retain this stylish dressing in spite of poverty, in spite of limited funds. And that's why uh, Chechen women in Poland become kind of instrumental in contributing to um, to this cultural But also they start to contribute to the open local communities. These exquisite dresses, which are the dresses for the choir in the city if they are located, they were jointly prepared by Chechen women and the local women from the choir. Uh, just as the way of contribution to the, to the local community. And a very symbolic picture. Uh, the, uh, in Poland, beginning of May, there is a day of national flag. And uh, one of actions was that people are making own flags to decorate own houses. And here, those Chechen women, which are uh, along with Polish women, sometimes even a sort of instructor, helping them to prepare national Polish decoration. And here they are on the picture with the mayor of city of Gdansk. Uh, and city of Gdansk is the city in which refugees, I guess, got most of agency. They become really recognized as the legitimate partners for the um, uh, for the city council. And uh, when the pandemic uh, COVID-19 started, they were Chechen refugees who started to make a face masks for hospital antiseptic gears. It was a time when the face masks were almost un, uh, impossible to obtain. And when I asked them why, why do you do so, not just for yourself, by, but also for community. And this is their answer. We don't want to be forgotten. We still want to be present. And one more deconstruction in the service of diversity. This is deconstruction pertaining to methodological paradigms and research methods. Uh, when we are talking about models of research among refugees, there are basically two of them. The one which is most characteristic for uh, quantitative methods 
I call it briefly fly in, fly out. Uh, their uh, research in which, uh, by means of uh, questionnaires and tests, um, stress coping um, are research by, uh, with the design uh, and method which is uh, capture Western understanding of religion. And the second way of uh, analyzing religion and uh, conducting research among refugees uh, is based on developing relations. In this method, uh, in this approach, research methods aiming at understanding experience of refugees, including role of religion, stress and coping, uh, are performed by interviews, focus group discussion, drawings, they are much more related towards emic understanding or even uh, understanding uh, completely indigenous understanding from inside of culture. And um, about qualitative uh, approach. we are getting uh, much more. Uh, we are getting understanding of the role of religion in building resilience and agency, and we can capture simultaneous presence of multiple and contradictory experiences of uh, perspectives. And finally, they are much more relevant for the chaotic world that refugees are living at. Um, and making sense in such a world cannot be achieved through precise tools. And surveys. And coming to conclusion, obviously religion contributes in both positive and negative way to refugee trauma. And uh, theoretical approaches tend to ignore such a different kinds of impact because they are mostly grounded in quantitative research and not sufficiently precise describe um, context of um, cultures, religions coming from outside Western perspective. And to sum up and take uh, and key takeaway points. First of all, do not assume who refugees are religion-wise because of the label of the country of origin. I think what I have mentioned, speaking of uh, Armenian Christians who are coming from Muslim country, Upper Karabakh, the enclave, then uh, Assyrian Christian uh, coming from the uh, Muslim country, which is Syria. So religion does not always comes hand in hand with the label of the country of origin. Secondly, important fact, please check big data pertaining to refugees flow. If you like to understand their religiosity, try to look at additional sources of information. Don't believe in big numbers as the valid and only source uh, which allows you to create your attitude. And finally, do check research methodology and methods behind findings about the relationship between a role of religion in coping with refugee trauma. And remember, diversity 
is a very important approach because it helps to avoid simplistic solution, simplistic measures, and simplistic findings.